pro-lifers are concerned that President Joe Biden's upcoming budget proposal will not include long-standing and crucial pro-life protections. While that budget has not yet been released as of recording time, we explain why pro-life groups are already preparing for a Capitol Hill battle. I can't justify leaving millions of women without access to the care they need and the ability to, con to exercise their constitutionally protected right. In the summer of 2019, then-Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden flip-flopped on his long-held support of the Hyde Amendment, which bans taxpayer funding of abortion. If I believe health care is a right as I do, I can no longer support an amendment that makes that right dependent on someone's zip code. That's why pro-life groups are expecting his upcoming proposed budget will not include long-standing Hyde protections. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, another prominent Catholic politician, has also signaled she does not support Hyde, setting up what's sure to be a Capitol Hill budget battle. I mean, I myself have been an opponent of the Hyde Amendment long before I came to Congress. As soon as the Hyde Amendment was there, I was thinking, how can we get rid of that? So it's long overdue getting rid of it. But pro-life groups say Hyde is just one of more than a dozen crucial pro-life protections that are part of the Hyde family. They're worried the patchwork of protections are also at risk of being stripped. These other pro-life riders, as they're called, include Helms, an amendment which prohibits U.S. family planning aid from being used to promote or provide abortions overseas. The Hyde Weldon Amendment protects hospitals and other health care providers from governmental discrimination if they decline to provide, pay for, or refer for abortion. The Silgender Amendment prohibits the use of funds to lobby for or against abortion. There's the Dornan Amendment, which bans the use of local or federal funds to pay for elective abortion in the District of Columbia, created by former Catholic Congressman Bob Dornan. And another pro-life amendment bans foreign assistance funds from being used for biomedical research involving abortions or involuntary sterilization as a means of family planning. That amendment is the Biden Amendment, named after then-Senator Joe Biden, who crafted it in 1981. Now that amendment and the other abortion funding restrictions are at risk from his own administration, according to pro-life leaders. Once Biden's budget is released, expected any day now, the House Appropriations Committee will make its markups before it heads to the Senate and lawmakers cast their votes. Joining us now on Zoom is Representative Jeff Fortenberry of Nebraska, who sits on the House Appropriations Committee. He is a Catholic and pro-life congressman. Welcome back, Congressman. Can you summarize the role of the Appropriations Committee when it comes to the budget proposal? And what will you do as a member of that committee if pro-life protections like Hyde are not included? Well, thank you, Catherine, for this thoughtful uh, set of interviews. This is a very, very important issue. Abortion is a great wound in the soul of America. And let me speak to the president directly. Abortion is not health care. Abortion hurts women. Abortion takes unborn life. And even though we may be divided on the question culturally and philosophically, most Americans still do agree, a majority of Americans agree, that their taxpayer dollars should not subsidize the abortion industry. And that's what's at stake in the budget fight in the Appropriations Committee where I sit. The biggest aspect of this is what's called the Hyde Amendment, named for a longtime legislator, Henry Hyde. It's a, what we call a rider. Uh, that means it's attached annually to appropriations spending bills, and it basically prohibits your taxpayer dollars from going to the abortion industry for the destruction of unborn life, which, of course, is very detrimental to the health care of women. And so even though this is a philosophical divide in our country, there has been a settlement around the Hyde Amendment as an important part of the budget process to stop this. That settlement is being undone by uh, the president and those in Congress who, who want to get rid of this amendment. It's very deeply disturbing because it goes, again, to the aggressive nature of the abortion industry and how they are now not going beyond uh, offering this so-called mm -hmm. service. 
they're now demanding that we pay for it. That brings me to my next question. Thank you for that clear summary. Congressman, can you speak to that importance of the Hyde Amendment and the other longstanding pro-life protections which do restrict abortion funding? Yes, traditionally there is a budget battle every year. Uh, now you will, what you will see is at the end of the year, it's almost regular, that there will be a big crisis whether the government's going to shut down or not. We'll come to some negotiation. A lot of these traditional pro-life riders, which were stated earlier in your commentary, uh, will be negotiated in the end. I've never seen this before, where there is an aggressive attempt to actually say that protecting the American taxpayer from subsidizing the abortion industry is wrong, is somehow related to providing adequate health care. Mm -hmm. This logic is upside down. Again, abortion is not health care. Women deserve better than this. And frankly, I'm getting ready to introduce a new piece of legislation called Care for Her. When there is an unexpected pregnancy, a woman and a family will know that they will be wrapped in a community of care before birth, at birth, and after birth for that journey of life, mm. for her well-being and that baby's well-being. I think this is an I think this is a new model of paradigm that we need to be about in the pro-life movement, so to speak. But of course, we're going to stand against these assaults on human dignity, these assaults on women health care, and then certainly not allow you to have to or make you subsidize the abortion Absolutely. Industry. Congressman, while I have you, we have just over a minute left. President Joe Biden, a Catholic, has flip-flopped on Hyde. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, also a Catholic, does not support Hyde. As a Catholic yourself, what are your thoughts on that? Well, this is a fundamental aspect of human justice. I mean, we're living in a time, this is the anniversary of George Floyd's death, where, where we witnessed in horror someone's life taken from the, at the hands of an an unjust assault by a law enforcement officer. And so our, our society is yearning for deeper meaning. And, and frankly, I'm, and I'm encouraged by this because it points to this idea that every person matters. But we can't leave out this one group of people, the unborn child and the women who carry them. Why do we do that? And I think this is a grave inconsistency. And it's part of the reason that the new generation, the younger generation, is increasingly sensitive because they're relational and empathetic, increasingly sensitive to becoming pro-life and providing these, these protections for unborn children in the name of social justice and the protections for women who may need a little bit of extra help to carry that child into life and to provide the well for the well-being of that child. So um, it's, it's just a tragic, difficult moment that we're fighting this out politically. But I do think there is a subtle growing movement that in the name of social justice, we have to stand together in commitment as a community of care, no matter how small that life is. Absolutely. There's definitely hope out there. Representative George, Jeff Fortenberry of Nebraska, thank you so much for your time and your leadership. Thank you, Catherine. Joining us now on Skype is a former U.S. representative for the state of Colorado who today serves as the vice president of government affairs for the Susan B. Anthony list, Marilyn Musgrave. Welcome back, Congresswoman. We are expecting President Biden's budget proposal anytime now. Can you explain why your group is not just focused on protecting the Hyde Amendment, but other pro-life riders your group says are in the Hyde family? Well, the Hyde family is very important. Uh, it has probably, there are 24 writers, which means amendments that have been added through the years, the work of great people. Helms Amendment uh, stops taxpayer funding of abortion overseas. Uh, the Dornan Amendment, and these are named from the people who sponsored them, uh, stops taxpayer funding of abortion in D.C. The Dickey Wicker Amendment stops funding for unethical embryo destructive research, research that would destroy life at its early stages. Roger Wicker is in the United States Senate now, and thank goodness for these pro-life people that have championed these amendments through the years. Absolutely. One of the amendments which restricts abortion funding is actually the Biden Amendment, which President Biden created when he was a senator in 1981. And we know he's flip-flopped on the Hyde Amendment. This all really illustrates how far he's moved on the abortion issue, doesn't it? It's really tragic. Um, so you think of 2006, even then, uh, Joe Biden was saying he did not support taxpayer funding of abortion. He said, I will not vote for funding of abortion. And now here we are then in 2019, where he totally caved to the radical left, to the extremists on abortions. 
We know that the Hyde Amendment and the Hyde Family Amendments have saved over 2.5 million lives through the years. And, you know, Joe Biden knows that, too. And it's tragic that the president has flip-flopped on that. So Democrats are after these pro-life writers. They're working with all their might. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, our president has abandoned his pro-life principles of the 80s. Mm, it is tragic. You know, next, the budget will go to the House Appropriations Committee for markups. You spent six years in Congress. Is there anything our viewers can do to persuade their representatives to protect life during this time? Well, they certainly need to contact their members of Congress. The way this all works is the president submits a budget, the House and the Senate do resolutions, and then these appropriation bills go to the committees in the House and the Senate, and they're 12 approved bills that they vote on. And this is for the radical pro-abortions, abortion uh, supporting legislators want to do away. Fortunately, uh, the House Appropriations Committee uh, has pro-life heroes. Uh, Kay Granger from Texas has done a wonderful job as ranking member working to protect these writers. You have Tom Cole on there from Oklahoma. Two great freshmen, uh, Ashley Henson uh, from Iowa and Tony Gonzalez from Texas, the decorated veteran that reveres life. So we have these heroes with Robert Adderholt, uh, John Carter, others that will work hard on these writers. But every member on the probes committee needs to hear from their constituents Excellent. on how important it is to protect Hyde and all the other amendments. And we're going to tell our viewers how they can do just that. Marilyn Musgrave with the Susan B. Anthony List, thank you so much, as always, for coming on. You're very welcome.